Hi guys and welcome back to another video on tips and tricks in CADI. In this video we are going to look at annotative dimensions. In other words, a way to set up dimensions with added intelligence which will adapt automatically its size in order to maintain the desired size when placing viewports on a sheet. Especially when using multiple viewports with different scales. Let me show you what I mean. Here I have a drawing and I want to place this section of the drawing on an A1 sheet at a scale of 1 in 50. But the second section I want to place on the sheet as a detail and this I want to place at a scale of 1 in 20. Now we do get users that copy this section for the detail in the model space and scale it so that it will represent a scale of 1 in 20. Let's have a, let's do a practical example to explain this. I'm going to select the section we want to copy. Pressing C for copy, select it. Now I'm going to pan and right click and scale. Using the scale of 1 in 50, I will take it to 1 in 20. I need to scale it 2.5 times and I place it down. Now here is where it becomes very interesting. You've got to bear in mind that whatever I change in this section of the drawing will not affect this that I've copied. There's no reference or intelligence linked to the two. And this is where the viewports are so important and save so much time. And to top it all, can you see the difference in size between the text and the dimensions? You're going to have to adjust this manually to make it workable. I'm going to step back here in order to do the viewport approach. So I'm going to select undo a few times and just get my view back. We are back here. I'm going to speed a few things up here because I'm not going to cover how to create viewports as I've done already videos on that. So just to get everyone on the same page, if I click on this viewport here and select it, you'll see that the scale that I've got here is 1 in 50, as so is the annotation scale. If I select the bottom viewport, you'll see this one is in scale of 1 in 20, and the annotation scale of 1 in 20. You will notice that some of the text and dimensions are also different in size and this is where we're going to show the intelligence of the annotation. Also be in mind that this is an existing drawing where the annotation has not been set up. So I'm going to go through a few setups uh, in order to explain to you how to modify an existing drawing. Obviously when you start with a new drawing and the annotation is set up from the beginning, most of these settings will be done automatically by CADI as such. Let's switch back to the model space and start with the explanation. The first setting to look at here is the model space annotation scale. Please do not get confused because of the setting to think that it is your working scale. This is just a viewing scale. Very similar to Google Earth for instance, we zoom into parts of the Earth which causes the size and detail to change, but it remains in true scale. The same applies here in CADI. Although our working scale always remains one to one, our viewing scale changes all the time in order for the user to view details clearer or at a larger scale. So this annotation scale is here to make your life easier in the sense that it will enable you to see visibly if your annotation is correct or incorrect. So I'm going to select the scale that I'm predominantly going to work in and also the scale that will place my viewport on the sheet. In this case, 1 to 50. Let's zoom closer to the dimensions and let's start with them. I select the dimension and looking at the properties, annotation is set to no and the style being used is an internal style. So I will first set it to use a style I want to create and then we will set the annotation options. From the context toolbar I will select parameter get, I will indicate the dimension and I'm going to select or click on parameter set and that is the internal dimension style. I'm going to create my own one. Let's go manage, say new, and I'm going to say caddy style. I will select the caddy style and I will set current. 
you can see the preview of caddy star which is now set current I can now go modify so if I click on modify I can make sure that this uh, the the scale I want to use is 1 in 50 and I can change the parameters as I require as I mentioned earlier that you can set up the annotation when doing a new drawing from the, from the word go the only option that you have to do is the option here at the bottom that says annotative if you switch that on the annotative options will automatically be adjusted for you in in, in the background to be placed correctly on your sheets and, and viewport let's test that I will click on OK and I will click on close now when I go and select horizontal dimension indicate a start point end point and I place the dimension press escape when I click on the dimension you'll see the annotator is switched to yes current is my scale 1 to 50 and I'm using this style called caddy star now let's apply to the other dimension so when I click on it we're gonna have a problem I cannot change the dimension style even if I go and change it to annotative yes I still cannot change the style so here is one of the brilliant features that I'm going to cover called clone so the theory behind clone is what I'm going to do is to take the properties of one object in this case this dimension and I'm going to apply it to all the other rotated dimensions which I want to change in this case all the dimensions all the rotated dimensions so here's another very important tip in, or trick in caddy I select one of the dimensions and I press shift and A on the keyboard and you'll notice I've got all the rotated dimensions in this case there are 25 it's automatically selected on the object properties uh, dark box there's an option for clone when I select clone in the command line caddy prompts to indicate the object to get the properties from I will select the one that we've inserted I'm going to select all the properties which are then must be applied to the selection of which is selected click on OK and it's done when I press escape I select one of the other dimensions you'll notice it has changed the style is set to the style that I want to use so all we have to do now is to change them all into annotation I will click on the newly inserted dimension and I will delete that one so I will click again on one of the dimensions I will press shift in A and all of them are selected I can now go collectively select annotative from the option of no and change it to yes and it will default to current of 1 to 50 I want to add the 1 in 20 because the viewport we've added is also 1 in 20 all I have to do click on this option select the 1 in 20 option use the arrow and it will add it into there and I select update and that is how difficult or complex it is it's really really simple when I now go and this is where the power comes in to see visibly what the effect will be the annotation scale with nothing selected the annotation scale is 1 in 50 when I change that now to 1 in 20 keep your eye on the drawing it will select and that is the new size it will be so changing it back to 1 in 50 that is the 1 in 50 so how will this look on my sheet let's change to my sheet and now you will notice that the dimensions the sizes if I zoom a bit closer and you compare the size of dimensions you'll see it is exactly the same so when I zoom out or press F5 I'm going to print preview this and it is perfect that we want press escape and I'm going to revert back to the model space and that is as simple as it gets in the next video I will cover the annotation of the text in order to also get the same or similar result. If you enjoyed watching this video click the like and subscribe buttons and do not forget to send me your comments and requests. My details as well as download links for the files used in creating this video can be found in the description below. Happy drawing!